Thank you, Mr. President, Madam High Commissioner. We meet today after two recent landmark moments in the life of the Council, the conclusion of the five-year review of the Council's work and functioning, and the Council's clear response to ongoing events in Libya. Madam High Commissioner, as noted in your report, a key benchmark of the Council's success is its ability to address chronic and urgent human rights situations and to make a difference on the ground, which will ultimately enhance the protection the Council provides to human rights defenders. By this standard, the review of the Council failed. However, the Libyan case shows how the Council can take decisive and unanimous action. The Council has shown what it can do with the tools it has available to it. The political will demonstrated during the special session was an example of the Council working at its best, sending a strong and united political signal to the world that serious abuses of human rights will not be tolerated. Madam High Commissioner, as you have noted in relation to the recent events in North Africa and the Middle East, civil society plays a central role in producing change and spurring international action. Human rights defenders undertake the difficult and often dangerous work of promoting and defending the human rights standards formulated at the international level. Without their commitment and bravery, the work of the Council would come to nothing. As you state in your report, one of the most valuable elements of the Council's mechanisms is their accessibility to human rights defenders. Reprisals against those who cooperate with those mechanisms are a direct threat to that accessibility. We therefore fully support your call for the Council to consider the adoption of additional measures to protect engagement between experts and all stakeholders. In this context, how do you envisage OHCHR's role in providing such protection? Finally, we see the treaty bodies as central to the better enjoyment by individuals of their rights. It is crucial that they develop into a system that can effectively support this goal. We welcome your own commitment to seeking innovative and creative ideas for how the treaty body system can better fulfill this aim. We also welcome the opportunities provided to NGOs to contribute to this process. Together with a large